We are live from the LA studios. So for the first time, Chandler and Eddie are wearing pants. Congratulations, boys. Hey, yo. <laughs> Run it back starts now. <laughs> Run it up, the run it back. Yeah. Run it up. To run it back, run it back, run it up, right. run it back. We're not wearing run pants tomorrow. Up. That's just. The... By the way, in in fairness, I never wear pants at home either. Do you, yeah. Shams? I always wear pants. Okay, no, no, I'm, I'm, wear pants. I'm, I'm the boring okay. one here. He's yeah. so professional. I'll, I'll take it. I'll that's take it. Shams Sharani, of course. My name's Michelle Beadle. That's Chandler Parsons. Eddie G down there on the end. And um, the good news for Eddie is that we get to start today's show with the Nets losing to the Lakers. But I won't go to you first. I want you to All sort right. of simmer in your misery for a second, and I will start with Shams. Your biggest takeaway from the Nets' loss to the Lakers last night. Well, I have two. One on the Lakers' side. Like, when you think about what the Lakers have gone through with LeBron James out, I think they're really looking at 20, 25 games in. So the fact that Anthony Davis is starting to play better, he's healthy now. And Dennis Schroeder, Thomas Bryant are expected to play on Friday, from what I'm told. So they're, you know, the fact that they're getting those two guys back, LeBron James hopefully will be back a little after that, either on Friday or Sunday against the Spurs. So they're, they're turning more, to me, in a positive direction. With the Nets, I mean, they're without Ben Simmons last night. Kyrie Irving still remains out. He still has to complete the tasks that they've set out for him. The fact that they're going to be without him for an indefinite period of time, no Ben Simmons, that's $70 million out Ooh. of your lineup. That's like, to me, what jumps out uh, in a very significant way. They need both of those guys back on the court and playing at a high level. If this team is going to be anywhere close to what they want to accomplish. $70 million that's out. a lot of money. Yeah, it is a lot of money. Yeah, and last night, honestly, to me, the, the first thing I thought was this was the first time I've ever felt bad for Kevin Durant. <laughs> wow. It's like every time this dude was crossing half court or got an off the block post up, they were sending bodies at him, and he was passing to guys that don't really know how to kind of step up and, and score the ball. And so That's a really nice way at, to put that. Yeah, I mean, this is where KD is really missing, obviously, Kyrie Irving, not so much Ben Simmons offensively, but anybody can, that can create and can score. It, it's, it looked miserable for him oh, last night. I saw God. him frustrated. I saw him. There was one play in the fourth or third quarter. He didn't even cross half court when, like, AD was kind of face guarding him. Uh, and, I'm, and honestly, same thing with, with, with Shams. The Lakers, they, this was a step forward for them last night. AD looked like the old AD. The Nets have always been thin, but he completely dominated the game from start to finish. And this was definitely a step forward for those guys. Look, first time, second time in Jock Vaughn's tenure that they've given up over 100 points. I'm not going to say this is a game they just assumed they would win. Okay. But it's a game they felt like they should have been the better team. Uh, I'm, I'm very curious, Chandler. Like it's a back-to-back. -back. I don't know how much that matters. Like, but I think what you mentioned is a great point. This roster doesn't have a ton of talent. It has some guys that are, you know, trying to get after it. But Ed, Edmund Sumner is starting games for them. This is a guy who hasn't, didn't play at all last year. He's been dealing with injuries. Great, great guy, talented. But is this a starter in this league right now? Should it be when you have a 70 million worth of point guards sitting on the bench and at home? Um, they were just lacking playmaking yeah. last night. I mean, you, you talk about you feeling bad for Kevin Durant. I mean, he's getting double, triple teamed uh, all the time with regular frequency. He brings the ball up the court. Um, he can't get to his spots as easily, obviously, if he's got multiple guys around him. And still he puts up, you know, over 30 points last night. So they need to get guys that can, you know, command attention, which they had with Kyrie Irving. They just need him back and, and okay, in, well, yeah. into the game plan. When, when's that happening? Do we have any... Any knowledge, any insight? Where is he? What's going to happen? It's, next? it's really indefinite. He's not going to be back on this road trip. They finish up the road trip. They'll play again uh, against Memphis on the 20th, and it's really uncertain whether he'll be back then too, because they've laid out six steps that they want him to accomplish. I have no indication that they've backed off those six steps. Wow. Um, even though Joe Sy tweeted on Friday that he met with Kyrie Irving on Thursday, everything went positively, and they're moving forward. Um, you know, and he's not anti or he, you know, has no hate beliefs, and you know, whatever. <laughs> Th that the, the statement was, but I think right now there's really no timetable. Oh, also, go ahead. just to touch on like the these teams of throwing one or two stars out there and surrounding with these other players that aren't really NBA players, I feel like it's not working. You look last year at the Celtics, the Warriors teams this year that are having success. They're deep. They have a bench. They don't miss a beat when their star players go out. Last night I'm watching even the Lakers. They had a time where they had Austin Reeves, Max Christie, Matt Ryan, Window Gabriel. <laughs> And, Pardon me? And Russell Westbrook in the game. And, and I'm just, it, it's not going to work. And it worked last night for them. Uh, but, like, I just think the teams with the deeper rosters, with the more depth, with the, with the more rotation players, that, that's, that I think is kind of the blueprint going forward. Because this, this thing with just throwing anybody out there with stars, 
it, it gives too many options for them to double team and triple team and those guys got to step up and they've never been in that situation before. This, this is a great point. Team building has completely changed. Uh, the Miami Heat, they tried to cheat that in a sense and they ran into the same thing. That first year they, they lacked depth. They had to find pieces that made sense. And we've seen that happen over the last decade. The Warriors are so dominant. They drafted all those guys. were able to fit those guys under their bird rights and make it work. But even they're looking now and they're a little bit talented. They're a little bit talent depleted with the guys they've drafted. Kuminga and Moody have only given them so much. They're playing two-way guys. So I think it's a great point. I think we're seeing it with the Nets and we're also seeing it with the Lakers, which is why we end up having these combos like, what could you get for AD? What could you get for Kyrie? How do you handle that? Because if you have three guys eating up 90% of your cap, yeah, you're going to struggle to put together a great roster unless you really hit on some of these picks or free agent signings. But the, the first couple games when, you know, when they got the coach switched out and everything like that for the Nets, they didn't look awful, and it was without Kyrie, and then there were some people like, oh, maybe they're better without. So now we're back to, no, they need Kyrie? Is that where we are now? I, I think for sure. For I mean, sure. Listen, they're not going to lose every single game. They're going to win some games, and these guys are going to play hard. There's going to be nights where they make shots, but... No, you're still, I don't care how crazy and how nuts Kyrie Irving and what he's been doing, he's still a top three point guard when he's playing in this league. And it showed last night, KD is unbelievable. He needs Kyrie Irving. He needs someone to relieve the pressure. And, and, and it's not the guys that they're throwing out there with him right now. And uh, to say they're better without Kyrie Irving, I think is, is silly. Pessimist says they beat the Wizards, they beat the Hornets. Like, who did they really beat, right? So, yeah, they need that secondary scorer, that secondary playmaker. They need that guy who, when Kevin's getting doubled on the back end, can attack closeouts and create offense for other people. Now, the, I think the real question is, is Kyrie going to buy in on defense mm. with the way they're playing right now? Because they're flying all over the place on defense. I know they gave up a lot of points to the Lakers last night, but when Anthony Davis gives you 38 and is rebounding everything that comes off the rim, it's a little tough. But is Kyrie going to buy in on that end? Because if you watch earlier this season, he hasn't been so great on defense either. I think you can say, you know, I, th I think it's a great argument, right? Is the vibe better on the team? Because when I talk to people on the Nets, they talk about the energy that you have right now over the last, you know, week and a half without Steve Nash there, with Jock Vaughn there, no Kyrie Irving there. So I guess you, you can point the finger a right. little bit at Kyrie Irving. But I think I would put a lot of it on Jock Vaughn and the coaching change that occurred. I think he has implemented a different culture there, different environment. But they need Kyrie Irving. And honestly, you know, Eddie speaks about defense. To me, it's also the relationships. When he comes back into that locker room, I mean, he hasn't played in two weeks. So the fact that you've been away from the team that long, you're not just going to come back and it's just going to come like that. And, um, you know, especially the way he left oh, the team. Awkward, right? Yeah. It, it's like, it's just super hey, awkward. Guys. A team suspension. <laughs> this isn't like he, there wasn't like misconduct technically. No. There was something, there was a tweet and then he was just away. There's really been not much conversation with the team and him. Sean Mark said the other day he hasn't even spoken to Kyrie. So um, I, I, th I think there's a lot, you know, that, that needs to be mended, even when he's back. Yeah. I mean, we, look, we've barely been working together for that long. But if you <laughs> sent out a weird tweet and got in a whole bunch of trouble <laughs> and then just walk back, I mean, that's it awkward. It would be awkward. It's so awkward. Like, I, hey, Eddie. Eddie's not doing that. But yeah. No, and by the way, for the record, that's the weird tweet. I got I it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think another thing to keep in mind is the last time we saw Kyrie on the court, he was almost refusing to shoot. He played a really weird game against the Chicago Bulls, and then we have not seen him since. The next day he did media, <laughs> and that was that. So that lingers in the player's mind, too. Like, we, you, you went scoreless into the fourth quarter. Like, this was pretty odd for you, for a guy who was jacking him up before, before that in the season. So, yeah, I think, I think there's a lot to mend, and it helps to get on the court and score buckets, but yeah. there's stuff behind that as well. And also, it's, it's NBA's short-term memory. It's, what have you done yeah. for me lately? So the minute he does come back yeah. and he balls puts out, a, yeah. it's over. no one's going to talk over. about this. Everyone's <laughs> happy he's back. Everyone's happy we're winning and healthy and playing. So I think he's dug himself a hole, but once he, he just needs to get back on the floor. He needs to get his teammates back in his good gracious, and then moving forward, I think. And then we just pass. we start the count for how long until the next thing. And yeah. that's, that's the, it's like one of those signs at a workplace, like without incident. Um, but you know what? There was, some, there was some good stuff for Joel Embiid, because we're keeping an eye out on him. 59 points, 11 rebounds, 8 assists, 7 blocks, all of that to beat the Jazz. By the way, that's an awesome sentence to say. He had to do all of that to beat <laughs> the Jazz. Um, but are we, is he back? We know that the MVP award is very important to Joel Embiid. He's been vocal about it. Is he back in that conversation? I mean, listen, this game didn't hurt. That's a crazy game. Crazy fourth, <laughs> That crazy yeah. fourth quarter. You, you saw Doc saying that's one of the most dominating performances he's ever seen. And, and 
Listen, I think we've all been talking about is he in shape or is he healthy? And, and he's looked a little sluggish early on, but this game last night just kind of shows his potential. He showed last night I'm still the most dominant big man in the league. He's and not even moving. Yeah, like, it's, totally fluid. It's it's That's the scary part. Yeah, exactly. And, and obviously, Oof. listen, they're going to need him healthy. They're going to need him not scoring 60 and 11 and 8 and 7 every night. <laughs> but this, it, when you get a combination of this with Maxi and James Harden healthy, I still think Philly will figure it out. Look, okay. look, if he can get Kelly Olynyk every night singled up like we saw in some of those clips, I think Laurie he'd be Markinen, on Kelly Olynyk. Yeah. yeah, looks great. Um, you mean nah. MVP candidate Laurie Marketing? He's Settle playing all star. Laurie's definitely an all star. Shout out Laurie Marketing. Laurie the all star. Yeah. I see it. I like it. But yeah, I think you, they need you all to be close to this almost every night. And, and even when they get James back, they need to find the rhythm to have enable him to be that when when he can. Um, it's, it's very interesting. 26 out of 27 four right. quarter points. I don't think I've ever seen That's that. That is crazy. I don't think me. I've and ever five seen five blocks in one quarter. Yeah, that close to a quadruple double. Like I, I don't. That's that line. Robot. That's a video game stat line. Yeah, that doesn't seem human. I mean, listen. Shout out Joel Embiid. He had a great game. I think the real test for this team is going to be when James Harden's back. We've talked about it before. They haven't. When those two guys are in the lineup so far this year, they haven't found that that cohesive offense that works because it's two totally different styles, and you can kind of see it on the floor. And now when Joel Embiid's, I mean, when it's just him, they're really just dumping the ball to him, and it's his show. It's vice versa when, when James Harden's in the lineup. So how can they find that fluidity? I'm, I'm very curious to see. This seems to be the million-dollar question for a few teams. If one guy's out, a big part of that's out, then we wonder, ooh, how's it going to be when he comes back? Is, is it that complicated? It's, it's just hard, especially as a role player. It's, 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 you got to find your rhythm. you got to find your role. And when the star player who usually carries most of the load is in and out, it kind of changes your role night in, night out. I remember when I played with James, when he was out, I was kind of the primary ball handler and it kind of changed my approach to the game. I was going to be more aggressive. I was going to play more pick and roll with Dwight. And, I, and then some nights, most of the nights, I was playing off the ball on him and kind of you, you have to be ready to do a little bit of everything. And obviously the more you play together, the better off you'll be. But yeah, it's just guys having, and like with Kawhi and, and with the Clippers, it's like with him in and out of the lineup, oh. that's tough to get that rhythm and that chemistry and that gel when people are on minute restrictions and load management. And it's it's tough and it takes a toll on you. If you truth serum these guys, is Joel going to say, I'd rather James not be out there or and vice versa? I mean, what do, you, do we think that? Like, uh, not, no. Depends on what you replace James with, but... I think most of these guys wouldn't mind having their own team be in the middle of the marquee and <laughs> getting to get their game off. Um, but but I think Joel understands they do need James if they want to contend with a title as their roster is currently set up. Uh, would they like James to play a little bit different style here and there and, and, and maybe, you know, placate to, to Joel? For <laughs> sure. Uh, but it's hard to replace that and that amount of scoring and that amount of you know playmaking for their team. Do not look now, but the Oklahoma City Thunder <laughs> are in the play-in mix. What is y'all doing? Okay, they're not supposed to be, but they dropped 145 points on the Knicks um, yesterday. And, and is, I, don't, I don't even know what to ask other than, is this a playoff team? Should they be a playoff team? I, I thought we knew the plan, but here we are. It doesn't it's seem It's early. It's it's still early. I mean, they still have have moments. I mean, they've they've you know they've been putting a lot of effort in you know benching SGA to start you know the second halves and limiting players like Giddy's minutes to like 20, 25 <laughs> on some nights. So you can't say that the focus you know hasn't been there. Um, but listen, they, they, when they're playing, Josh Giddy's really really good. SGA is playing like an all-star. There's no question about it to me. And that's why teams like the Lakers and Raptors and Knicks are all thinking about when is he going to become available. Even though the Thunder have no plans to trade him, it's like when can we Still. get him? Still. Um, so I, I think he's an unbelievable talent. So when they're playing, they're going to be competitive. It's just, you know, on the nights where they're being a little... <laughs> it's funny. When you, when you look at SGA, he's 24 years old, and that's old for this team. So it's He's like, a veteran on the team. Yeah, so yeah. it's like, do we package him and trade him and go even younger? And, and, and But they're kind of now in this situation where they're in no man's land, where they're like the Jazz, where they're kind of accidentally winning. Yeah, oops. <laughs> and now they're going to find themselves. It's like, it's like, you know what, it reminds me of SGA. It's like Brad Beal the last couple of years on the Wizards. He's playing just good enough to kind of get them in like the middle of the lottery, yeah. which honestly sucks because you, want, you either want to be really <laughs> good or really bad. It's the worst, it's the worst, worst place to be. to be. And he's absolutely balling right now, and they have so many young pieces going forward that like, yeah, it's interesting. Like, do they make a move and trade him? Does New York, do the Knicks finally get the, the guy like him that they brutally need? Um, They're waiting. Yeah, waiting. so it's interesting to me because they're kind of now in that 
situation where like they've won so many games now where it's like they kind of just got to keep their foot on the gas. I, I can't, like, why though? Here's the thing. I find the garden fascinating. There are certain players that go into that building and just thrive and shine. Giddy is now, he's kind of crushed it when he's Him been in there Will. and he talks about Yeah, what is it? I mean, <laughs> you, you know. First like, two players in NBA history. That? Why, why to, that uh, building? Triple doubles in their first two. I mean, games. it's it's the Mecca. It's the it's the coolest, dopest place to play basketball in the world. And so when you go there and all the court is lit up, the lights are dark, you see every celebrity that you've watched on TV your whole life. Mm. If you're ever going to ball out, it's at MSG. <laughs> and it's pretty easy to ball out against the Knicks in the recent years. <laughs> Usually. Poor yeah. Knicks. That's the other side of the equation, right? Yeah. The, Knicks, the Knicks are kind of really up and down. Yeah, it's They're, not that hard to get off on them. We, we talked about them on our last show. They were perfectly mid. They were 5-5. Five and five. They were, you know, 4-4 four and four against the East, the 1-1. One one. Like, uh, you kind of wonder what's going on with, with Thibodeau there. If, 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 uh -oh. if there's going to be a decision they make, they went out their way over the summer to say, hey, we're not firing him. People, a lot of people thought they were going to get rid of him then. He's had bumped That's heads. That's the kiss of death, by the way. He, when you say it out loud, I just feel like it's coming. He's bumped heads with players on the team over and over and over. They they traded for Cam at the at the deadline. Who's balling? Cam, Cam, Cam Reddish is nice. And, he, yeah. and, and Tibbs essentially refused to play him. He's played him this year a little bit more. A uh, very interesting team over there in New York, and especially for all the money they paid this summer to be something better than they are. Right. They invested in it in, in um, RJ. They obviously invested in uh, Jalen. So, yeah, where do they go from here? <laughs> They're supposed to be a team that's a playoff team. They don't look great at all. Well, you, they, 145 points for a Thibodeau coach. I mean, it's supposed to be defense, right? Like, yeah, that's that, his whole he, thing. You, oh, he's going nuts this morning. 100 Giving 145 to that team. But you got to think about who he's playing. Like, these aren't, like, Vets, you know, Emmanuel Quickly and uh, Obi Toppin. Like, these are a lot of young guys that anyone that has seen Tibbs' history in Chicago and Minnesota, he's used to playing vets. Like, that's usually all that he relies on. Jimmy Butler played, like, five minutes his rookie season. Like, right. I'm, I'm exaggerating. <laughs> but he really relies on his vets, and this team has been built through youth. You know, it's kind of an interesting juxt juxtaposition between the front office and what, you know, Tibbs and his coaching staff want. Yeah, and a guy like R.J. Barrett, you get that extension, they invest in you, and you expect him to kind of take that step forward, and he really hasn't this year. So I don't know. If you pay me all that money, I'm just going to chill out. Yeah. Like, it's I already got my happen. checks. That's what I did. That's, that's what, <laughs> We're good now. I don't, I don't need to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> that's a horrible attitude, Chandler. <laughs> you said it. No, that's fair. That's Guaranteed fair. Guaranteed money. <laughs> yeah. Guaranteed. Every Guaranteed. dollar. Uh, Luca Doncic. He's leading the entire league in scoring. And as we always tend to do eventually, we talk about his usage rate. Um, his own coach, Jason Kidd, a little bit concerned about it. Can he keep this pace up? Is it even feasible to do so? I personally don't think he can play another style. So he's going to keep this pace up one way or another. You, these stats come out over the weekend where he drops shooting percentage in each quarter and is just gradually worse as the game goes on. We've always wondered about his conditioning as his career has went on. He looks to be in better shape, but yeah, that's a taxing style of basketball to play, to have the ball that often all game. A historic usage rate. And of course he's leading the league in scoring. You know, you're you have every opportunity to do so. Uh, what I always wonder is, can you win a title doing this? We've mm -hmm. seen these guys, James, we've seen, even seen it a little bit with LeBron and, and now with Luka the last few years. They run into the real contenders and then they get sent home. Conference finals was great, but that wasn't a close series at all. The Warriors knew exactly what to do with them, and, and they ran away with it. And that. Luka went from the conference finals to international basketball exactly. to now doing this, and he's not really like this physical in shape specimen either so I do think it's gonna it's gonna wear on him he I did do, talk about it too was it last week he said I'm tired and like, I, you already. Guys saw, <laughs> right. and Kuzma even said something like yeah they're not that hard to guard when it's just this one guy I keep it's just, like so it's like it's really not and if, if I'm him it's it's wearing on me a little bit and I'm starting to get to the point where I'm frustrated where I had this secondary ball handler with with Jalen Brunson and you let him go mm. now I have these guys like Spencer Dinwiddie who I love who's a great player Christian Wood but those guys aren't second best players on championship teams and when okay. you go to the conference finals you expect to take that leap and get back there and the Mavs got worse and they are just riding Luka and he's balling he is a generational talent I think he's the MVP right now but at what point is it too much and this guy's gonna wear down so you so Dinwiddie's not the guy like you don't think that's enough I mean, the to... second best player no I think he's a great player I think he's a great six man I think he can go get you 20 on any given night but to carry a whole load for a season and deep into the playoffs I don't see him being that guy on the championship team. Yeah, I mean, it would have been great to have Jalen Brunson on this team. But I, I, listen, <laughs> I, I, I do think Spencer Dinwiddie, Christian Wood, you know, it's weird. Christian Wood's coming off the bench. 
yeah, he seems like he wants to start. So I think for him, um, you know, how does he get into position where he's going to be a starter? This team is going to be at its best if he's bought in defensively, offensively, and he emerges as a starter. But right now, he is coming off the bench. So I think once they get their rotations figured out, I'm curious to see what Luka's usage rate is going to be. And also, guys hmm. have been hurt in and out of the lineup. Christian Wood just sat out a couple games, came back over the weekend. So I'm curious to see when they're fully healthy. Exactly what Luka Doncic's is used to be. And this JaVel McGee signing also is kind of head scratching. Yeah, he, really he hasn't, hasn't, play, he hasn't, he hasn't even played hasn't much in the last week. Anything. Week yeah, like we've seen him against the Nets. He played, I think he played three minutes right. to start the game. He never played again. I, I always wonder with this style of play how frustrated it is to be a Dorian Finley Smith with Tim Hardaway Jr. You're literally just in a corner watching Luka do what he does. Waiting. And, and yo, you might That's get tough. some open shots. You've been there. Yeah. You'll get some open shots. You'll, you'll have an opportunity here and there. But a lot of the game, you're strapping up, you're playing defense for Luka in a lot of ways, yeah. and then you're going to the other side and hoping he passes you the ball. It seems like a frustrating style of play. You've done it. Yeah, and some nights it works, and some nights and everything's going, and he is making that extra pass. It's fantastic, and right. the game comes to you so easy. You're getting wide-open shots because he's creating so much attention. But, yeah, most of the time you're frustrated. You know, you got people in your ear saying you can be doing more, you want oh. this and that, and it's, it, it definitely weighs on you, but... For a guy like me, like I, I, I love playing with with James Harden. I think he yeah. made the game so much easier. He he created so much attention where guys got open looks. It was just up to him or not to you know play unselfish that <laughs> night and to make the extra pass. Yeah, it's tough. And that's out of our hands, right? As role players, that's just like a yeah. relationship. Which mood are you in today? Great, yeah. can't wait. Eddie, MVP, Luca, right now? Yes, no. I'm gonna go with Steph. Okay. I'm going to go with my preseason pick still. Okay. He, he's, he's killing it. We'll, we'll talk about him at some point. 0-7 as well. on the road. First NBA champion in NBA history to start off 0-7. Oh, there's your special oh, there's your cloud right there. there. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, bringing, I'm bringing the heat today. So you're saying yes to I'm not. No, I'm not, not giving the MVP. Yeah, he's not going to do it. Way. I'm going to say Joel Embiid. Really? Okay, I like that. If it's not Carl Anthony Towns, it's, it's Luka Doncic. <laughs> That was my preseason. What? That was, remember that's my preseason? Well, yeah, pick? I know. Remember when I was like, that's not going to happen? It's still not going to happen. It's yeah, not happening. Not. I like uh, Luca. <laughs> I th right now, yeah, but I, I yeah. do worry about the how long he can do that for. Coming up next, Shams will have some of the scoop. Plus, who made Embiid and Zion look silly? Plus, we have dunks, 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 dunks. All of that when Run It Back run it returns. Up. Run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back. Run it up, run it back. Run it up, run it back. Run Eddie, why don't you take us through this one? Look like a foul from here. <laughs> oh, no, that's all clean. Look like a foul. I will say this. Uh, Kevin got him back later Ooh. in the game, so let's say that. But he, he's blocked him a random amount of times. There's been pitchers going around all day. From the OKC Golden State days, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's got him a few times. Hey, look, when you get beat, you got a desperate measures, I guess, and yeah, there you go. I mean, it's Congrats pretty. Congrats, Russ. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a nice moment. Um, <laughs> I don't know if they're friends or not, but we do have a lot more where that came from. It's time. For that man has a family. Uh, some of these are embarrassing. Some are not as bad, but we have a little DeRozan here for those of you who are interested. I love a DeMar dunk. Mm. Right? Yeah. He's still doing it yeah, uh, all, this stuff, all these years later. He, yeah. I mean, he talks that thing all the way back. He, he's a very, very, very good in-game dunker. Oh, he, DeMar to what? I will never forget that. It's a nice cross, that. too, on her. Like, and you don't even know that he still has it because he plays so much on the perimeter yeah. as far as mid-range, and then he'll do something like that. Yeah, well, that's still good. Just every once in a while to remind everybody. Oh, yeah. Who That'd I be am. great, right? Still yeah. got it. Still got it. <laughs> right? Don't forget. I'm I still know. here. It looks fun, though. <laughs> it does, it does look fun. <laughs> it looks fun. Definitely a floater guy, you know. This one. I mean, that's nasty. This was nasty, too, because he hit him with a couple bang, bang, hezzy cross, and then finished yeah. opposite foot, Ooh. hung on the rim. Hung this was about rim. as disrespectful as it gets. Big Z got to learn how to slide them puppies, man. It, it's been a few <laughs> years. I know he's a bigger guy. Oh, also, his, his Drewski interview killed yeah, Right. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. I was dying watching this. Man. I've never heard him talk, I don't think. No, it was perfect. That it was, was like a sketch. I, I loved nuts. it. Shout out to that reporter for lying, giving him a B-minus on defense. But how that cute. Was it was so right. quick, though. B I was always impressed. A B-minus. Yeah, right, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think my defense? Was? Every time Zion speaks, it shocks me that that voice comes out of that human. <laughs> there you oh. go. All star, Lori Markinen over Clint Capella. I just, but they, they call, call a charge, right? Offensive foul. They took See, it away? I hate when they call offensive fouls on Doug. Anthony yeah. Edwards had one Yo, recently. Like, oh, Doug the the dunk of all time. Also, if you're a center, Clint Capella, you should not be allowed to take charges. you got to go up vertical and try and block this. Okay, like, I like yeah. it. You know, my hot take is the game is just way better if we remove charge block. Like, let's just get it out of there. And the refs got to see that this is a nasty dunk. They can't take this away from him. I know, it's such a buzzkill. Right. 
And that's an all-star Lori Marketing. Yeah. Thank you. That is have some respect for right, that man. Put some, <laughs> put some respect on his name. <laughs> the calls will get better, Lori. Just yeah. wait I, I really hope that this yeah. lasts throughout the entire season. Giannis. Oh my mm. goodness. <laughs> oh, He's my. always I mean, good for one or two of those. Yeah, again, this is though. just becoming every day for him. Well, what do you, there's nothing to do. That's it. <laughs> right? Like, there's, just let it happen. On both of their big guys, like. <laughs> yeah, that's nasty. Yeah, blue shout by out to one. John Collins for giving it a giving it a good, it a good effort. Yeah. I can't believe you just gave that a shout out. <laughs> shout out for getting dunked on. <laughs> shout out for getting dunked on. Yeah. yeah shout out for I guess Yo, being there. Watch I, your head. I wouldn't have made that rotation. It would have been you know we won the game. I'm out of here. <laughs> a Kongu didn't you know he, he kind of yeah he didn't do him any favors there with that closeout. Oh <laughs> uh, Will Barton. Mm. Will sneaky dunker. He's yeah. been doing this for a while. There was some body there too. All right, yeah, did he, that's, did he, that's a foul. That's definitely that's a, a foul. foul. That's did he get one. the rim, that's or is that like the one. super layup? Let me see right here. Uh, did he get it? That was like a Dwight uh, Howard throw in. No, see, that's a little better see, than I'm that. See, I'm hating on that. Uh. That's a layup. That's like yeah. a really nice floater. So you're not counting that as a body if you do that? No, no, no. Like, really? You gotta... Yeah, really? Go you still don't count it? No, that's something. There's a picture taken of it. It looks like a poster. Right here? Like right here? Looks mean. That's a body. Yeah. I'm hating. I'm hating oh, on that it. one. And I'm hating like, on Blake, <laughs> the old Blake dunk. You know, dunk it. DeJounte. Oof. This what is nasty, happened? but but I'm gonna give Joel Embiid some. I'm, I'm gonna give him some benefit of the doubt. You know, he kind of got tangled up. You know, really his, his feet. He's a big man. You know. Hey, he's we been doing plantar fasciitis. <laughs> you know, we got yeah. we got a history. <laughs> we got to we, we, we cut him some slack on the show. You know, no, <laughs> plantar fasciitis is why we're gonna say no to that. We did not cut Ben Simmons any slack. I'm not cutting JoJo. <laughs> Hold on, those are two different people. Let's not. All right, like come on, come on, Joel. Come on. Joel told us in the off season he practices falling for the sake of being healthy. So mm. yeah, maybe he pra- maybe he fell on purpose here. Maybe it was his plan. Honestly, it wasn't even that crazy in. of a move either. He literally shot faked, and, and Joel fell. It's not like he actually broke him off. I think once he fell, he just leaned into the fall. He just gave it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He just, He's like, all right. Yeah, he did. Actually, if you see that right Look, there, he he just, yeah, he fell honestly at the shot fake, little, and then little lumbar he didn't roll. even see the spin here. He was, yeah. already, he was already on the deck. Yeah, so we're, nasty, we're not going to count that one either. No, I like it. I all right, like that's the move. <laughs> Look at the score, though. Bump like, the Johnson Murray. I'm posting it. You for drop sure. me down 20, like, all right, whatever, bro. Yeah, I don't Check even ball. care. Yeah. I, no, you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> uh, coming up next, we've got DJ Khaled with the best NBA highlight of the entire weekend. And can Eddie beat us all at Survivor? The answer is no. Oh, we'll be what? back. <laughs> Daniels. Yo, who could that possibly be? Who's got a pillow for their feet. Come on, man. <laughs> I bet my 17 year old daughter, DJ Gallen! We should have known. <laughs> Another one. That's ridiculous. Oh. Is that a real phone call or no? No, 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 no chance. No chance. chance. Okay, the pillow. Um, love, hate, where are we on that? I have a pillow down here under my shoes oh, as well. Sure. So. No it. pants, I but hate it's a pillow. So you got a shoe cam? <laughs> You can't see it because of this. You hate it. I hate it. What? What? You clearly walked already on like, <laughs> out of the tunnel, out of the car. Your feet touched clearly. the ground. This is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it is a great matching set. I hate the shoes. it. I love the pillows. I don't know if it came with the shoes. Um, who on the set could rock that, though? Eddie. Um, I feel like Eddie. I, Eddie. Eddie. Eddie's I, got I, the I could find an that. outfit for that. Yeah. I, I could make it work. <laughs> if I had to, you know. I think uh, they're his shoes, his Jordans, right? Like, is he the happiest person in the world? I just, I, he's an interesting character. He might be the most tortured person, <laughs> and we just don't know. Right? What if he's secretly at home he's just that kicking he's been, puppies because he's, he's angry? He's with I, the smiley face and the set. Yeah, when he catches it. a charge, it's all, it's all gonna be fraud. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna. Talk. Sorry, we're done making fun. Oh, no, to we're the not. Shoes, we're not done. I know I didn't hate the shoes at all or the pillow. Uh, time to. Uh, are we hitting the panic button? Maybe we are. Maybe we aren't. Chandler. Start with a little Clay Thompson, shall we? Um, 35% from the field. That's a career low, in case you were wondering. Are you hitting the panic button? Uh, I am. And, and I think Clay, um, I love Clay Thompson. I think he's the second best shooter of all time. And we've talked about this, you know, kind of all season long. He went through two very, very serious injuries. And we're well into the season now. And so th- this is something that's kind of becoming the norm for him. And, uh, I've been through injuries before and as much physical as it, it's it's also mental. And like I, there were times in Memphis where I was shooting the ball not to miss. And I, when, mm. he, when he had 39 points in the quarter and he's going berserk in those in those highlights, he's not thinking. And you can kind of see him putting pressure. He's taking some contested shots. Um, and as much as it is physical, that, that, that weighs on you mentally in and out of the road, in and out of the, the minute restrictions, not playing a lot. Guys like Jordan Poole and Wiggins, you see kind of like the future of this team going another direction. 
I'm hitting the panic button just because he's, he's a year older and he's coming off a, a, a lot of very, very serious injuries. And the team's struggling. And the team's struggling. And everything's magnified when you're losing. And this, this team's not accustomed to losing. And he's no. been a huge part of their success. And look, he's a Hall of Famer. Like I said, he's one of the best shooters of all time. But this is, this is concerning when you go through what he's been through and still not been able to snap out of it. Is, is there anything you can do? I mean, I, I feel like when your team struggles, it just seems to downward spiral. Everything seems to pile on. Is there anything to do? They've been trying to mess with the rotations, trying to tweak it. You're seeing Anthony Lamb on a two-way contract, Ty Jerome on a two-way contract. Like, they're playing significant minutes right now, or Anthony Lamb is for sure. They have Jamichael Green's not playing. He's a veteran on the team. James Wiseman's not playing right now. He, he had, a, I thought, a good preseason and a summer league. He hasn't played at all uh, over the last couple or week. Plus, so I don't know. I feel like this team's going through a lot of transition, especially with the rotation. What a weird time. And it's tough because earlier I kept saying, oh, they're just doing this. They're getting these younger guys valuable burn. Right. And it's going to pay off. Now they're not even playing the young guys anymore, and they're still losing to these kind of bad teams. So, like. A little lost. Yeah, a little lost. Lost in the sauce. Eddie, we got Chandler's MVP here, Carl Anthony Towns, averaging nine rebounds a game, <laughs> career low, 21%, uh, which is his lowest in 17 to 18 from the field um, points per game. Are yeah. you hitting? The panic button. Don't do, it. Um, Don't do it, Eddie. Do it. Just because I'm not that big of a Carl Anthony Towns fan, <laughs> I'm not hitting the panic button. This is pretty wow. much what I expected of this season. Oh, that's even more hurtful. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he's adjusting to Rudy Gobert being there. Obviously, Rudy lives to Rebound. gather rebounds and protect the paint. And I think he's adjusting to a little bit of Anthony Edwards is that dude. And you have to give him his due. They've underachieved, obviously. D'Lo finally had a good game for the first time this season yesterday. Um, I'm not panicking in that sense, but I do think this is a little bit of what we're going to get going forward. He has to share a little bit of the pie, and he's going to have to adjust. I think you should panic. I think you should say I'm panicking. <laughs> I'm, I'm, panic I'm not panicking. This is, this is good because it, for them last night, but overall this year, I mean, there, there definitely got to be a little bit of panic in I Minnesota. Do, yeah. I think you are right. I don't know what else was expected. Like, yeah. what is the actual ceiling realistically that people have put on yeah. that team? The two like, bigs move. It's a weird move. Like, no one's doing it. It's, everyone's also going smaller and switching pick and roll and shooting threes, and they decide to go the Well, if exact it was working, yeah. we'd be like, geniuses. Right, but I, that's the problem with trying something that no one else is doing. Uh, if it doesn't work, we're going to make fun of it. And that's unfortunately the case right now. Chandler, <clears throat> the LA Clippers. Uh, this is weird. The worst offensive team in the league. 104, just under 105 points a game. Are you hitting the panic button? Uh, not yet, because uh, they're missing their best player, and who knows when he's going to come back. But, and they're still kind of staying afloat. Paul George has been great for them. Reggie Jackson has been good. John Wall, it's, I'm so excited to see him back. Morris, you know, th this is a very deep, versatile team. They got guys like Robert Covington, Luke Kennard that aren't playing much that would start on Brooklyn and start on the Lakers. So, like, they have such a deep roster that I'm not panicking quite yet. It is weird that they were, like, the number one three-point shooting team in the yeah. NBA last year to going to this. But I, I like the Clippers. I think uh, they're a little bit kind of trying to figure out their way and trying to get healthy and trying to do everything they can to get Kawhi back. But I just think I expected a lot more from them, and, and they kind of haven't reached that potential yet. But I, I'm not panicking quite yet. Yeah, good news for them. <clears throat> Ty Lue said that uh, Kawhi Leonard should be back very soon. He, he did five on five the other day. He's supposed to do a few more five on fives, and the goal is that he's going to be back soon. It's like I want to be excited because I want to see him play, but I'm scared to get excited because how long is that going to last? I'm yeah. not excited. I don't, <laughs> I don't. He's going to come back and we'll see how many games he plays. That's right. That. I hate that I have that I feeling too. I love Kawhi. Yeah. But this seems to just be what it is now. It's just a it's a bad reality because you're just waiting for the next Wednesday out. Um, there were other draft picks last year in the top three, and not just Paolo Bencaro, Eddie Jabari Smith was one of them, and he's not doing well. Just over 30% from the field under 30% from three. I know he's probably hearing so much about other, other rookies, but are you panicking? Yeah, I'm panicking. I mean, there were some concerns when he was picked about the fit out there, and obviously with Jalen Green and Kevin Porter Jr., it's going to be tough to get the ball. Those guys are going to have the ball most of the time. He's not exactly put in a position to thrive. He's doing a lot of that, catching hmm. and shooting. And I think the issue for him and the issue coming into the league for him was not a lot of shot creation anyway. People were wondering, could he get shots off the dribble? Is he just going to be a catch-and-shoot guy? Because you're taking him number three overall, and that's pretty tough to pick him there. Uh, it, it sucks for him how the, the lottery shook up because I think in Oklahoma City with a little more time and oh, a, a little better role that made more sense for him would have been better. But he ended up in Houston, and he's got to deal with the little bit of little bit of uh, action he's getting, and 
He's not He's not exactly thriving yeah, with it. Yeah, it's a tough situation for that kid. This, there's no leadership. It's a bad team. They're very young. They're all ISO. They're all trying to get get off. Like, this is a tough situation. You'd think this guy was maybe going number one. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, day of, we, we still yeah, I thought he was going number right. one. Draft he day. shot the ball yeah. really well in preseason, though. That's why yeah. I'm kind of, he had like a game in preseason, he had like six, seven threes. So that's why I'm kind of surprised so that he got off. I think it's there. He showed in summer league, too. He's just, for whatever reason, regular season basketball is different, though. The than bright lights. They're scary. It's different than preseason. Okay, I can see that. It happens. And again, he us. doesn't really have anybody creating, making things the thing. easier yeah. for him. It's Jalen Green, Kevin Porter. These guys are all getting buckets themselves. He doesn't have like a system and an offensive team, to teammates to, to kind of get him going. A lot of grenades being thrown right. to Jabari, and <laughs> this is what you get for a rookie. Chandler, we're not going to talk about just Clay Thompson. Now we just need to take the entire Warriors team and, and just figure it out. Sixth worth defensive efficiency uh, in the league. Uh, just nothing is going well, maybe other than Steph. So now will you hit the panic button on I'm the at, entire team? Yeah, I'm, I'm panicking because, uh, you know what? It's it's Draymond Green and Klay Thompson. They've been the anchor of this def defense for years. And Klay's always been one of the better two-way players. And, and they're just not. They're a year older. Um, they're coming off injuries. And, the, you know, the, they just can't seem to do anything right. I think this is a team, obviously, that it's still early and they could figure it out. And they could be laughing at all of us in June when they <laughs> win it again. I, I also wouldn't be surprised if they did that. Nope. But, yeah, I, for now I'm panicking because th this isn't them. This isn't their DNA. This isn't what got them winning championships and being who they are. So I'm extremely concerned if, if I'm them just because the two guys that have helped us defensively especially, I, they're not really the same guys anymore. Yeah. And on the road, what is the deal? Well, what's the deal? Yeah, should be told, they look like they're panicking. Right. And At this of, point, yeah. Of, they're, they're doing all the adjustments, the rotation, some of the quotes coming from guys like Clay. And, 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 yeah, like we should panic because clearly they're, they're, they're right. changing things up. Yeah. They're not playing the young guys. They're playing the young guys. They're like. When the pilot starts to panic, <laughs> right. that's when we yeah, panic. Yeah, I'm panicking. <laughs> I'm a, it's not a good time Buckle for up. anybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, D'Angelo Russell, Eddie, let's talk about him for a minute. Averaging 14 points a game, that is his lowest since his rookie season. Panic? Another guy on that team adjusting, trying mm -hmm. to figure out. I mean, I think this is more about Anthony Edwards than anything. He's not being able to be the primary ball handler that he kind of needs to be for his style of play. Uh, you know, we, we've seen him flame out a little bit in the playoffs as, as teams key in on him and realize he's not that great of a shooter and, and he's not. He's really not going to ever really drive. So I think, yeah, there's definitely reason to panic here. Um, you know, thankfully, luckily for them, they have Anthony Edwards who they feel like could take that role if need be, and they can slide him to the background a little bit. Uh, time to play a little convince me. You guys know the drill. I give you a premise. You may you may not believe it, but your job is to convince me anyways. Chandler, this is sort of the theme for you today. We're sticking with the Warriors. They will oh. miss the playoffs. I mean, listen, if they continue to kind of miss shots and kind of try and force things going with clay and and i think the biggest reason they'll miss the playoff is because these teams like your spurs like your kings who are so thirsty to make the playoffs mm. they're younger the thunder these teams have youth and it's funny because we're talking about all these teams tanking but like they're not they're not trying to lose they're just not playing yet. young guys and getting them experience and and hopefully they lose but as M these guys are NBA players, they're talented and they're young and they have energy and they're playing hard. So, I, I, listen, do I think the Warriors are going to make the playoffs? Yes, but I think the <laughs> you whole are the worst. <laughs> at this listen, but I think I mean, come on, this is a tough one. Of course it is. They're not supposed to be I easy. I think the way they don't is with these other guys. They kind of just figure, okay, we've won this too many games. We're not tanking anymore. We're going to move forward and keep our foot on the gas. And the Warriors are out. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Happy. The Warriors. I, like, I, like, I mean, it's no. The Warriors have missed the playoffs two years. Two years ago. And then they lost in the play. I'm like, yo, it's not completely out the realm yeah. of possibility. Yeah, I mean, look, I, it, it's still hard. That's one of those teams that they they have enough equity, I think, with all of us. It, they still figure it out, right? At some point, maybe we panic, but I'm not there yet. Um, Eddie, yours. I like this one. Draft picks should be able to have one veto, select a team they don't <laughs> want to or have to play for. <laughs> Convince us. I absolutely love this. Yes, this is. Yes. Draft night is already too long. <laughs> Shams is ruining it. Every pick, like we, you know, we have. <laughs> Imagine if I have to report on vetoes. Yeah. yeah. What if it's just the same two cities, and it probably would Victor be. Victor uh, Yama has rejected right. to play for Charlotte. <laughs> I yeah. mean, right? I love it. Let him do the, oh, no the coach way. from Jerry Maguire. Let him. I'm do not that. buying it. Yeah. I'm not buying this one. <laughs> I, I, I like it's the this. Eli like, Manning rule. I think it would be fun. Eli Manning, let's right. shake it up. I'm, I'm all for this. I'd love to see Shams scrambling on draft night, going, Yo, Oh my God, I would Paolo just won't play for Orlando. 
I, I mean, know, Chandler, guess. give us your uh, your two veto cities if this was in, in effect when you were going. <laughs> <laughs> You've been to every city, Chandler. There's got to be two. It's funny because I chose this team. I would I would veto Memphis. I, okay. I, I, it's, wow. And, oh, sorry, I mean, guys. And I would probably veto Cleveland. I've, I've been, oh, that's right. Oh, you you've already Yeah, did. you're on the record. Listen, of that everybody. One. Listen, there's very nice people there. It's, 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 there's, there's Some of my good best food. friends live in Cleveland. Yeah, there's good people there, but <laughs> there's just a lot of other more fun, interesting cities in the NBA. Not vetoing Minnesota is insanity. Well, that's the Minnesota thing when you start thinking about it. Fun. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> it's Minnesota <laughs> is, they got action over there. All right. Oh I believe you. Yeah. I we could do you. an entire hour yeah. on just the cities and breaking right. them oh, down. Oh, sure. <laughs> Break Actually, we should. One we should. by one. Yeah. One market. We, we should We're have a show just We all have yeah. opinions yeah. on all of them. Oh. Good Lord. Because yeah, those aren't my two vetoes. Chandler convinced a uh, number of three-pointers a team is allowed to attempt should be capped. Yeah, you know what? This would even the playing field a lot, and it would honestly really help teams like the Lakers. Imagine if you could only shoot 20, 20 threes, 25 yeah. threes. They would be a lot better. Anthony Davis last night had a really good game, not taking one three-pointer. And okay. so the, the game's kind of getting bogged down a little bit. Everyone's take. Seth, Seth Curry has ruined the game. All these kids, I'm How watching dare. highlights, they're shooting half-court shots. It's, it's The game has changed monumentally. And, and I think it would kind of even the playing field if they just eliminated it or the number of, of, that they're allowed to take. And like I said, I think it would actually make teams better if they had a cap. What an odd thing for somebody to have to keep track of. Yeah. Imagine saving it. Like, right? Like, you don't have to save these last two threes for the last minute. Yeah. Or being wide open and can't take the three and got to take a it dribble It just counts pull. as one? Yeah. That's actually, yeah, that's worse. Yeah. You, have it wide open. Okay. you lose points if you, tip, you take an extra that's three. That's the thing. Are we Imagine being the coach foul? tracking that, though. The entire <laughs> right? game. Like, you need oh, one guy tough, just tough job. You one mess woman it up, doing that. You mess it up like... You get fired because you messed <laughs> right. up the amount of threes. Like it was 24. Yeah. Oh no, <laughs> that's a weird thing to have to keep track of. Um, Eddie, convince all of us actually that you would outlast the three of us on Survivor. Okay, so they always target the athletes. Chandler's gone. Right? <laughs> that was it. They got Cliff out of there. They got they get everybody out of there. I, I feel like Shams is just like you know. I'm a Survivor though. See, I was gonna go the other way. I feel like Sean is like, you know, Hollywood. He's not gonna Whoa. enjoy the show. Oh, yeah. See, oh, shot that's fired. fired. But I just think like, oh, man. I love this show. I watch it all the time. Too much. <laughs> I'd be like ruthless. I'd be looking for the idols. I'd be blindsiding everybody. I'd play like that. I feel like, like you don't understand how mean I am as a person. But that's okay, because if we ever end up on Survivor together, now I'm learning. You're dead. Now I'm a little worried. <laughs> yeah, see? You got so one thing you right, because I would finish fourth place. <laughs> <laughs> I need the Wi-Fi. I need air conditioning. I need air conditioning. I need my latte. <laughs> Survivor. Oh. Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi most importantly. Survivor's though. not for me. No, yeah. no Wi-Fi. I won't survive. Dreamy. Okay, there you go. So he's out. We know that. I might be out with no Wi-Fi too, though. So right. Yeah. All right. Actually, so I'm eliminated too. Chandler's one on one. Uh, yeah. Da, da, da. I've talked to Shams after like a two-hour plane ride with no Wi-Fi, and he's just losing his mind. Yeah, so yeah. I, 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 I think I got bad. him. All right, it's down to Eddie and me. And you. I would love no and Wi-Fi. And no me. one to bother you for days and days. Yeah. Please bring that. Okay, we're taking a break. Uh, the city editions, they were out in full force over the weekend. We're gonna rate them. We're gonna break them all down. Good, bad, and ugly. When Run It Back returns. Run it up. Run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up. All right, the uh, city jersey looked like it was copped straight out of flea market. <laughs> okay, those are, those are horrible. that one's not great. Mind um, you, you tuck your jerseys in, by the way. Okay, so, well, yeah, but then you get rid of. That's what I understand about that one. That's Half what of the design is already going to be hidden. It's going to be gone. That's yeah. what I don't understand what, who, either. Who did that? But I don't know if it's helping though. It's a bad <laughs> it doesn't jersey. help at all either. That's a shitty jersey. It's fair. There were a lot. There were a lot of jerseys that we got to. We get to judge them all, and we're going to start with. The San Antonio Spurs. Careful what you guys I say wonder, about this I one. I wonder who set it up to start with this one. Right. I, made that call. I mean, I did. Mm. But come I on. love those. Yeah, by the way, those are fire. Zero things wrong. Interesting. The colors kind of perfect. got those old grizzly green colors. I love the logo right there. I love the side. This is a, this the first fiesta. time I'm seeing this. This is dope. Are jerseys still fashionable like for casual wear? Because I, I think <laughs> wear that. That's you wear nice. that? Wait, are you the Palooza? You wear a shirt under the Who's jersey on the Spurs though? Would you How get? dare you? Custom I get the Beatles. <laughs> Keldon Johnson. I get the Beatles. I get the Beatles. Beatles. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no. I'll wear Beatles well, Spurs jerseys tomorrow. Guys, we have people. Look at this. Jakob Pertl, the only there spur I know. Block up. We call him Block up. What number is he wearing? It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> we don't Do know. they have the courts to match that? Uh, I or think no. they do the, the, see how the font's kind of funky? They yeah. do the funky. It's kind of a Flintstonian font. This is fun. I like. I like it. I do lot. too. I like, well, it's my favorite color, so obviously it's perfect. Uh, how about New Orleans? Showing up. Um, okay. Purple. Very. Song it's very festive yeah, in New Orleans. I like, I like oh, New Orleans. Yeah, this isn't bad. This is cool. Yeah, it does feel like New Orleans to me. 
yeah, it's a little Mardi Gras color. Very yeah. Mardi Gras. Okay, Bourbon I don't Street. hate it. Um, <laughs> what? You, you know what I hate is the backdrop they use for these photo shoots. Why, why is this the place you put these jerseys in? That's yeah. a great question. It's like an abandoned warehouse. Yeah, this well, isn't bad. <laughs> yeah, it's a creepy background. <laughs> good jersey, though. Good jersey. That looks like every scary movie where they keep the prisoners. Yeah, it's but, like where okay. Saul was filmed. <laughs> yes, <exactly. laughs> I'm not sure I get the choice either, but we weren't there to, uh, to say. So, Pacers. I can't decide which... Uh, what? They, they have like an obsession with this color scheme <laughs> that they've been doing even since the Danny Granger days. That's true. That I'm just, I don't, I don't know. Get I'm not it. really feeling that. Like the, is that black? The black and the blue? Yeah, that's what a is, weird mix. Is it a chain? Is it a rope? Is it a, what is the thing that's bordering? I, I bet there's some real deep, meaningful reason they went with this. <laughs> I just don't understand it. I bet there's no meaning. Just a bad design. Just, just not pretty. <laughs> just, yeah, just not cool. Yeah, I don't, gonna, I don't love that one. It's got a weird cartoony vibe. Yeah. But not in a good way. I'm going to pass on the half. Okay, we're passing half. on yeah. uh, the Pacers. No, thank you. That's don't send those. How about, all right, Eddie. Nets. Look. That's clean. Uh -huh. That's fire. Uh, the, the black Basquiat jerseys Basquiat, were obviously yeah. really dope as well. Um, yeah, put these put the shorts up for sale. I need a pair of these shorts. Yeah, this is clean. It's simple. I like the font. You and do like the font. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to make a call. I'm gonna have to get one of these shorts. Why do they the write out B K L Y N? Why not just B K N? Yeah. Why? It is a weird. Yeah. It is crayon like. Maybe I'm just a stickler. I'm just a stickler for that. No, but you're right. Why add the other? You're right. I kind of see what you're saying. It's simple, almost Super like a child. Super clean though. Did it. I, I really really dig the jerseys. <laughs> yeah. Is like that it. why I we like, like it? Yeah. We like children doing art. Okay, right, cool. Yeah. Um, I'm glad we're all on the same page on that. <laughs> the Hornet. Yeah! <laughs> Don't do it, Chandler. I'm going to do it. Do it. I would like to shout out Zach Harper, whose tweet went viral when this came out. Because he said, men everywhere are having a hard time finding this jersey. <laughs> and may we all just toast that. <laughs> the fact that there was multiple meetings. I thought, I thought it was the Celtics. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Did anyone look at this before they said, yep, do it? Nike, the team, the NBA, multiple meetings. They probably planned this for over two years. Like, how did MJ you can, see this? I was like, this. Yep. You can say it's the airport code, but we don't wear airport codes on no, our shirts. Nobody see, knows this Charlotte CHA. airport code. I don't understand. I'm confused. Yes, yes. Are you? That's that's what you're supposed to be. That's the airport code? That's not Charlotte good. That doesn't that's work. That's what I'm saying. Look, sound it out, people. This was a bad idea Nobody from the beginning. Nobody knows the Charlotte it's airport code. It's the worst one we've seen. Not cute, but also hilarious. It's the worst one we've seen. They gave me much laughter. Also, the pinstripes? What do you guys think about the pinstripes? Oh, I, I didn't even I see them. I can't get past <laughs> yeah, I can't even get past it. I didn't see pinstripes Never noticed them once. All right, Miami. That's fresh. Okay, I like yeah. I personally like it. Okay, like, I hate this. Why? Yeah. Talk to me. Yeah, I, I hate Why? this. It's so They're very Miami similar to Brooklyn. You like Brooklyn? Right? Oh, of course I like Brooklyn. <laughs> but this is a little, you know. It is. It does look like a ransom a letter. Ransom which, letter. But exactly I don't hate that. To say. A colorful. I love that the letter. threes, the, the pink pops. It's clean. It's They're light. They're also different it's, on the back. Tropical. As well. The numbers are tropical. I do think you're being a little hypocritical, Eddie. I do think it's very similar to Brooklyn no, in its not vibe. Me. No way. <laughs> Bias? No way. <laughs> no. <can't laughs> be. Zero chance. Oh, I feel good about that. We uh, we're gonna sign off for today. We will be back from the LA studios tomorrow. But before we go, Eddie, can you share your uh, coffee order with the group? Only because the words were weird. Go. It's not a coffee. It's a it mango wasn't. dragon fruit lemonade. All I know is the word dragon. I've yeah. never <laughs> with the blueberry muffin. Just a cup of sugar. It's it's really good. <laughs> you have a cavity after drinking. That. Learned yeah. a lot about these guys this yeah. morning and there's so much more to learn. We're going to bond tonight. That means tomorrow's show will be the best show that's ever aired on any television anywhere. Until then, enjoy the games, enjoy your Monday, be careful out there. See you manana.